Today, we're gonna be walking through exactly how to optimize your LinkedIn profile because that is truly the key to building credibility on the platform and getting more visibility with recruiters. So that way you'll get way more interviews and just really put your best foot forward on the job search. I'm Jess Ramos. I'm a data analyst and the founder of Big Data Energy. And I create content here on YouTube and LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, and my newsletter on data analytics, SQL, and career tips. So thank you so much for being here. It means so much to me. Please subscribe for more so I can keep making these awesome videos for y'all. And definitely check out my SQL course and other resources if you're interested in being a data analyst. The first thing you need to really focus on is optimizing your profile. If your profile is dusty, it's okay. I get it. I'm not here to judge you, but you need to clean it up and put your best foot forward because recruiters and hiring managers are going to immediately look you up on LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn profile is literally like your own personal landing page online. And it's honestly just as important as a resume nowadays, if not more. Your LinkedIn profile adds life and personality to your resume. So your resume is just like a sheet of paper, but like your LinkedIn profile is like a way to show off like your skills, the things you've been doing, maybe, you know, community events you've been going to. It just makes you show yourself off as like a real person and not just a piece of paper, which honestly makes it easier for recruiters and hiring managers to connect with you and really like understand you on a deeper level, which helps you get hired. The first thing you need to do to optimize your profile is to have a professional profile picture. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you have to necessarily wear like a suit unless you're going for like a super traditional like suit kind of job, but it means you need to put your best foot forward. So make sure you look very like polished and professional. It's okay if you're wearing something like a little bit casual, but don't have on like a baseball cap or anything controversial, don't have like a drink in your picture. And honestly, like it's really cute, but don't put like your kids or your dog in your picture. Like don't make the picture be a selfie because you want to just have a very clean professional headshot. It's someone's first impression of you. And yes, of course, like discrimination based on what you look like and bias should not be part of the hiring process. But the reality is that it definitely can be. So that's why I say like, don't put like your dog or your kids or like, you know, don't give them any reason to judge you based off of your picture, which is unfortunate. You also want to have an amazing cover photo. And remember, this is not Facebook. So don't just put like a mountain range photo or a vacation picture. That is not what that real estate is for on your profile. On your cover photo, you want to have something more about you that kind of summarizes your career and what you're looking for. So if you want to be a data analyst, go into Canva and just design a little graphic that says data analyst and then your top three skills that you want to highlight and call attention to. So maybe like SQL, Power BI and Excel. And you can also maybe put your industry too if it's relevant. So for example, if you're like looking for a healthcare job or an education job, you can put that there too. Another tip is always put your location as the closest big city to you because recruiters are searching by city. So if you live in like a tiny town in Illinois, no recruiter is going to be able to find you. Put Chicago. By the way, I don't even know any other cities in Illinois. So if you're from Illinois, please don't come at me. I'm sorry. Next on your profile, you want to go down to the about section and you want to have a very like appealing and interesting about section that highlights your skills and experience. Don't say anything here about breaking into data, transitioning into data. Don't say anything that's going to like call out the fact that you don't have any experience yet as a data analyst, because that's just going to immediately drop your credibility. So say like, I'm targeting a data analyst role. My background is in education, this industry, whatever. And my top skills are blah, blah, blah. Here's what I've accomplished throughout my career. And your LinkedIn headline is probably one of the most important parts of your profile. It needs to be a high level overview of who you are, what you're looking for, and what your top skills are. So it needs to either be your current job title or if you're job searching, your target job title. So like if you're a data analyst, put data analyst at so-and-so company. If you're maybe a nurse transitioning into data analytics, don't put nurse because that's just going to make you look inexperienced as a data analyst and recruiters are going to pass you over. So instead, you're going to go ahead and claim data analyst as your title and your headline. And then you're going to follow with your top few skills. So you can say data analyst, 
SQL, Power BI, Excel, healthcare. So that way you're just making it super clear that you're looking for a data analyst job, your top few skills, and the industry you have the most experience in, which is healthcare. And that way you already look like a data analyst on the surface. So a recruiter is going to be more likely to give you some attention and look at your profile. Whereas if you say nurse in your headline, they're going to be like, oh, that's not a data analyst. I'll find someone else with more experience. So now going down to the experience section of your LinkedIn profile, this is where you want to list all of the past jobs that you've had and you want to add bullet points for each job of all of your accomplishments. So not your job duties, not I did X, Y, Z, I printed out this report, I made copies, blah, 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 blah. No, they need to be accomplishments. So big highlights, big things that you accomplished in that job and quantify them. You need to quantify them based on money made or time saved. And of course, you might not know the exact amount, but just estimate it. It's okay to estimate it. I saved the team five hours per week by blah, 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 blah. Increased revenue by 30% because of the funnel analysis I did. And then as you go down your profile, you get to education and do not put your education years because... Maybe you graduated recently and you're too young. Maybe you graduated a long time ago and you're too old. See, there's just no way to win. Why does it matter what year you graduated? It doesn't. It can only be used against you in discrimination and bias. So just remove it, cut it. You'll literally never find my graduation year on my LinkedIn profile. It doesn't matter. Look at my experience. Going down further into your LinkedIn profile, that's when you're going to get to skills, certifications, and recommendations. So for the skills, you're going to want to highlight the top most important skills for your target job. If you want to be a data analyst, your top skills need to be SQL, a BI tool of some sort, or data visualization, and then like Excel or Python or storytelling, whatever you think your best wild card skill is. But the top two need to be SQL in some sort of BI data visualization tool. I see people all the time with completely irrelevant skills as their top skills to highlight. It'll say like teaching or like nursing or like something completely random. And I'm like, no, you need to highlight like your top three as like data analyst skills. I also see people say, oh, I don't know SQL well enough. I'm scared to put, put it down. If you're taking the courses, you're learning the skills, you're working on them, put them down. Why? Because recruiters are searching for those skills and they might not even find you if you don't have those listed under your skills and up at the top where they can see them. For the certifications and courses, if you've completed any certifications of any kind or any courses, put those there. It shows that you're actively learning and investing in your education. And then for recommendations, this is when you're going to go bother everybody you've worked with in the past, all your friends, your mentors, anybody. Ask them to give you a good recommendation and make sure they're highlighting the things that you want to highlight based on the job you're going for. So again, if you're a teacher or a nurse, you don't want them to write about how you're really good at managing kindergartners and giving people shots. No, you want them to highlight skills, how you made decisions based off of data, how you made a huge impact, how you improved processes and saved time, you know, things like that, that'll translate more directly into a business corporate data analyst role. And at the top of your profile, it'll share exactly how many connections you have with others on the platform. But once you reach 500 connections, it'll say 500 plus connections. I want you to connect with everybody you can until you reach 500 plus connections. Because if somebody looks you up and you literally only have five connections or like 100 connections, it just makes you look less credible and less connected in the industry. It might take you a few weeks, but you should literally send connection requests to literally everybody until you reach at least 500. And of course, connect with people that have like a target role that you want or work in a target company. So go connect with a bunch of other data analysts, specifically data analytics managers, senior data analysts, lead data analysts, 
technical recruiters, all at companies that you'd like to work for. Just send them a quick, lovely note when you connect and say, hi, I'm Jess, so great to connect with you. And they'll be more likely to connect with you if you send them a note. But of course, take Jess out and put your own name. All right, I hope that helps you when it comes to optimizing your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is literally your biggest superpower in personal branding, job searching, and just having an evergreen career. So you definitely need to like go do this right now. Do not procrastinate it. Do not close out this video and go watch dog videos on YouTube. Go optimize your profile right now and tell me in the comments what you think. I'm Jess Ramos. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you.